Hello guys, thank you so much for joining in. We shall just wait for some time. Let's see more people joining in and then we'll add the host for the day. Hello guys. Hi. Hello. Hi Victoria. Hello Mr. Broken Brain. That's a nice name. <laughs> Hi Arun Prasad. Hello all. Hello. Hey Shuja. Hey. Hi Deepa. Guys, we'll just wait for some time and um, give it a minute or two before all of you all join in and then I'll add Dr. Guru Raja here. Yeah. And once I add him, I will try to put the comment section off as always so that we can um, not have interference in between the talks and then we'll take the questions at the end of the session, please, as always. Hey, Vidya. Hi, Ishwarya. Hey, Ramesh. Good to see you, man. So cool. So we um, thank you all for joining in again. I have Dr. Guru Raja with us. I'm very, very excited about the talk. Um, uh, and uh, ironically, I haven't ever met him before. We, we spoke only two days ago. Uh, we, we've exchanged a lot of mails in the past. We've been in touch with, that, each, other, uh, with each other in the past. So Dr. Guru Raja is, is one of the finest um, frog scientists in our country. And he's done some phenomenal work. He's given us uh, 21 new species to the country of frogs. Um, he's, he's discovered some three unique behaviors on frogs that we didn't know about. So, um, and uh, you all know that I have been a very, very, very big fan of frogs all for the last 15, 16, 17 years now, since 2002, 2003. So um, it, it is, I'm looking forward to this chat where I know that uh, though I know a little more, a little about frogs, I'm sure Doc knows a lot more about frogs. He's done a PhD on uh, amphibians and its ecology and stuff. So so I look forward to the uh, a chat. Uh, as, as suggested earlier, I will be putting off the comments after I add him. And uh, then uh, uh, probably will at the end of the session, we'll take the question. So if you have any questions, please hang on, uh, send us the questions and then we'll add. Uh, we'll, we'll try to answer all those questions. Yeah. So I'll quickly try to add Dr. Guru Raja here. Doc, I'm sending you a request to come online. So if you can kindly please take the request and come online. Hey, Doc. Hi. Hi. Hi, you. everyone. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you guys. Yes, yeah. yes. So cool, Doc. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, coming along and uh, giving us an hour of yours. It'll be nice. So let's let's. Uh, usually, what we do is we try to keep this conversation uh, uh, very non-scientific, if possible, so that uh, whoever is listening to will be able to understand what the world of science is without making it technically heavy um, uh, uh, yeah. with the help of stories or with the help of um, any anecdotes that you know or any behavior. So I, uh, uh, doc, I have been a very, very big fan of animal behavior, uh, extremely okay. big fan of animal behavior, anything, any animal, it could be a damselfly, it could be a monkey, it could be an elephant, a frog, a toad. I love to know about behavior. And I, I know for a fact Perfect. that you have described three uh, unique behaviors, uh, particularly only in frogs. So I look forward to having a conversation with you, Doc. Thank you so much for yeah. taking this time out. So cool. Thank, so thank you. Thank you, Sachin. Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. I quickly do is, guys, I'll turn off the commenting, please, so that we can uh, we don't have the comment section coming up right in front of your face, so that it's it's uh, yeah. muted, and then we All will right. try to take up the questions after forty minutes. So we'll we'll have uh, so it's seven o four now. We'll try to have a conversation till seven forty. We'll take up questions for Perfect. fifteen uh, twenty minutes, and we have to unfortunately Perfect. end it at fifty fifty five minutes, so that we can save this as an IGTV for future references for people. Yeah. So Perfect. I'll quickly switch off the comment, guys. Thank you so much for again uh, uh, signing in. Cool, Doc. Thank you so much again. So thank you, uh, thank you. <laughs> so please uh, <laughs> tell us about yourself, Doc. What? How did you get into frogs and stuff? Wow. Uh, well, oh, that's a nice journey. Some twenty twenty one years back, uh, right. I, I was a bird watcher in the beginning. In the sense, oh, okay. uh, I still do bird watching. Right. Uh, it was in my high school days. I started doing my bird watching, and uh, uh, all the while, uh, till that time, uh, I wanted to become an engineer. Okay. Uh, in the sense, my my brother was my inspiration for that. So I was right. thinking I should do engineering. Right. But right. Uh, something happened to me. Like I was stuck with rheumatism. Uh, I was laying on the bed for three months, and right. uh, uh, my brother himself took me to bird watching. That was okay. way back in my eighth standard. 
right right so so all saturday sundays uh, every week probably a, a small pond next to our home or a lake next to our right. home will go do birding and all so right. that's where i switched from have having that engineering kind of stuff to something to do with biology right. and that again forced me to score well in biology and then get into bachelor's in biology right. and in masters also i was doing environmental science and right. that is the turning point when we used to do a dissertation uh, we generally oh. being asked to do a dissertation as a, right. uh, a small uh, fulfillment of our masters program right. and uh, my supervisor actually asked me to go and list the birds of our university campus and okay. since i was a birder so i said right. i already know like there are 60 around birds i want <laughs> wow. something different right so that's the turning point so he said oh, then okay. why don't you do something on frogs because he was working on right. frogs and oh, i said yes, perfect i know uh, yeah. and 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 all the while i am very inquisitive guy like i don't right. want to repeat certain things i want to yeah. do something more okay right. i said i have never touched anything let me see what it is yeah. so he immediately yeah. took to his home he put a enamel tray on which right. he opened a old jar a formalin right. uh, filled jar with specimens filled right. in so he yeah. put them on the enamel tray and he started explaining me oh this is nictipatricus this is nictipatricus i'm like ah, what is this <laughs> but know. but just just looking at them i said okay let me see and right. uh, when he took me to the field uh, yeah. this was uh, in 1988 december okay. and wow. he caught one frog from the stream and okay. gave it to me in my hand oh god and yeah. it just slipped from my hand it <laughs> right. just slipped from my hand and yeah. i should have seen, like i couldn't see I his face like his, right. he was staring at me like you killed almost a frog but i was i didn't kill it it just slipped from my hand yeah, yeah. right yeah and it took almost one month for me to get out of that slimy fear. creature how yeah, to yeah, hold yeah. Huh, fear and all those things discomfort yeah yeah and right. then it it slowly changed me saying that their eyes were very very yeah. intriguing for me it's it's like right. when you look at them it will be like are you really going to catch me are you going to really observe me <laughs> right. so that's the hook for me so I that's know. it so from then awesome. onwards i got into that right that's yeah, it. that's no, the I, journey I, I, that's the beginning i understand the feeling of um, people who just get into frogs i had that yes. uh, on my first yeah. ever introduction to frogs in 2002 and i was made to hold a kalula and kalula ah. are oh. any which way is very slimy and they bloat up and it's yes. very wrinkly <laughs> I don't like do how am i supposed to do this but but it was so <laughs> fascinating when it it was so yeah, different yeah, it yeah. was so unique uh, that uh, that i got hooked on to something frogs happened and, oh, okay uh, uh, yeah your your screen is frozen to, yeah. yeah 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 i think it was the internet problem yeah so uh, so yeah, okay. yeah but also back then i think uh, one of the kicks was that we did not have enough reference materials we didn't know what frog we are seeing yeah. Uh, uh, yeah i started frogging in amboli and i saw amboli bush frog which didn't have a name back then so it was a Correct. bush frog Correct. that is all we know and i'm asking Correct. people what could it be we were like we don't, we don't know and so described it as like okay so cool new frog and what not so it's very fascinating true true yeah. true, true true same 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 with me so when i started my uh, supervisor used to tell me like it was just masters imagine uh, and the guy who is getting into the field and touching all the frogs and asking like every time you touch a frog you'll say, what is this what is right. this what is this <laughs> I, I probably he got really fed up with me he said i right. think you should do phd with me only so again it continued yeah. i tortured right. it probably a long time and he took a revenge of, of uh, right. getting a phd from me uh, that's right. a that's a perfect thing and and that's right. actually led me to write a small booklet booklet like in 2012 so which came right. as a pocket pictorial guide because i had experienced these issues like how to exactly. identify where to look right. for and, right. and all over all over references are like 100 years old holinger we talk about yeah so right. that was the right. challenge correct so for yeah. people who don't know uh, dr guru raja has a lovely book booklet that he published in uh, 2012 on the frogs of western ghats it covers almost i think how many species doc yeah oh, there you go how many species does it cover doc <laughs> so uh, it covers about 75 species uh, awesome. it was written in yeah 2012 now it is outdated right. but i have a yeah. free version available online people can online. just Perfect. search frogs and toads yeah they can Super. get a pdf version cool. of it yeah awesome yeah. awesome cool doc yeah. so let us get started uh, start about sure. the basics of amphibians doc what, what do you want Perfect. to tell us about frogs amphibi uh, uh, you know uh, yeah toads yeah yeah seals anything so go oh, perfect so uh, we generally again when you talk to uh, any scientist we either want to start from historical perspective right. or we want to directly go and say this is the part of the frog <laughs> what i will do is i will just take myself back in history sure. uh, that's a nice way to uh, pitch ourselves right. 
Okay. So we will go in back in our evolutionary history. So right. when we say us, uh, that means humans. Humanoids right. have come probably two lakh years ago on Earth. Right. Two right. lakh years ago. That is two right. followed by how many zeros? Five zeros. Five zeros. Uh, yeah. So whereas uh, if you look at frogs, they have come around three sixty million years ago on land. That was for the first time. So right. imagine where we. I am talking about the time scale. Right. So. Uh, if you just go back in uh, in time, it is three sixty followed by six zeros. Right, my God. Whereas us, we are two followed by five zeros. Frogs, three right. sixty followed by six zeros old. Okay. So right. they were initially they were. Uh, it, it is uh, it is said that uh, they were all fishes. Right. They were inside the water, and fishes were really troubled because they were all over the place inside the water, and they were looking right. for newer landscapes. Right. And those right. are the fishes which actually. Use the front fins, pedal, yes. and first frog, the oldest fossil from uh, Madagascar, which is which is called Triadobatrachus, yes. uh, which is in late Devonian period. That's the right. oldest frog uh, fossil we have. And right. recently, also, uh, right. if you remember, a uh, couple of months back, we uh, finally got one uh, uh, frog species. Uh, again, it's fossil records from the Antarctic regions. So right. all the while we were talking that there is no frog in Antarctic, there is no right. frog in Antarctic. But now, yeah. recently we got there is one frog which was uh, living right. in Antarctic region too. Right. So right. if you see this, this is where uh, I would definitely say, like you look at the time scale of evolution, right. how frogs have come and how yeah. we have come. We right. should be really thinking about some species which have stayed for so long. Exactly. It, it, they, yeah. it might have seen so much of. Changes in the uh, in the right. climatic changes, probably right. many extinctions. Absolutely. Even dinosaurs died, but frogs stayed back. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's right. the that's the kind of species I am looking at. Right. So uh, again, if you see from evolutionary perspective, also it is fish first, then amphibians, then comes reptiles, then birds, and then mammals like us. Right. So right. amphibians plays a crucial role of uh, something inside water and something on land. So they right. pitch in between. to come right. on to the land and right. that's where right. their evolution has started yeah right 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 yeah. so so very basic terms like people ask is why do frogs croak why do they have a vocal sac why do they what is it that they advertise and why is it are there any frogs that they do not have croaking mechanism there are yeah. some yeah. who use the bellies to croak some use the throat pouch some throat use to throat, throat yeah. pouches and what not correct, correct. so, so if yes. you can tell yes. us more insight about oh, that oh. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yes. Again, whenever we talk about frogs, the connecting right. point with people is that uh, the monsoon hits right. and you start listening to the sound. Uh, I yeah. don't know about the uh, typical urbanites, but sure. anybody who has gone to uh, some rural areas and all, they would have definitely right. seen uh, yeah. or connected with rain and frog croaking. Right. Uh, what precisely happens is that frogs generally croak, uh, and and the croaking ones are in 99 percent of the time are right. male individuals. that okay. means the uh, the male huh, male right. ones which will croak okay. to attract the counter uh, the, the yeah. female yeah. right they want to mate and they want to uh, lay eggs that's right. the issue right. uh, again why do frogs croak is a triggering factor uh, for example they you may not see certain frogs uh, which are croaking in the monsoon may not be croaking during the sun summer right that's because uh, the change in the conditions for example if If it is uh, something like 100% saturations of humidity, that right. triggers the hormones in the frogs right. to croak. Correct. Right. Because the, when they lay eggs, lay right. eggs has to be in a moist conditions. Okay. So monsoon provides them the moisture, ah, right. and uh, the male uh, says, "Okay, this is the right time for us to lay eggs." And right. uh, since they don't have anything like how human beings are in the sense, right. in terms of sex. they have to do it outside the outside. fertilization yeah. happens outside the body right yeah. so yeah. Uh, male yeah. just have to shed sperms and female lays eggs and just yeah. that gets fertilized outside the bodies yeah. so frog starts croaking and yeah. females will come and look at their face and say okay uh, your voice is not so good quality oh yeah. you are not looking so great in your That's not right. looking at their physical appearance but yeah. with their uh, vocalization vocalization so vocal has a quality right for yeah. example how you uh, if, if somebody like bhimshan joshi is singing or say somebody who will be singing through their nose uh, nose right. uh, tone Correct. so Correct. it is shrill but right. uh, the voice which is very uh, strong and right. uh, having very high weightage so yeah. that gets the attention of the female so right. female will look for these characters and then say okay i want to go and mate with such a strong right. person right. 
a uh, strong frog and then uh, that's where uh, their mating happens so right. croaking is in in the initial stages is to attract the mate right. and frogs do uh, multiple ways of croaking some uh, do with one vocal sac some will do with right. two vocal sacs which right. is like in typical bull frogs that you see right. and some will have one large balloon like thing right. and some will croak but you don't even see any vibrations at all right. so uh, there are even that kind of frogs also so right. in like Uh, to put in a go uh, in the sense uh, to generalize uh, again 95 to 98% of all calling of frogs re- are right. related with mating purpose right. so they want right. to uh, mate with the female that's why they crow and right. female is selective in frogs it's not the right. male who will select the female yeah. so female yeah. will select who is better for her and right. her progeny and right. then they will uh, accept and then they mate Okay. having said this there are also there are certain differences in frog croaking right some species like uh, we have bicolored frogs and all okay. uh, i don't take a scientific name here because it looks yeah. like we start talking in uh, some okay. greek and okay. latin right so if you look at bicolored frogs there are uh, species acceptance from the female so when the male croaks female right. also responds in saying Correct. oh i accept you right. so it's called reciprocal call right so uh, that is one kind of call or right. let us say if toad is being uh, attacked by a snake when right. the snake catches a toad correct toad also so releases a, a certain kind of right. sound yeah it is called right. distress call yes okay. so there are these kind of call but these are all very less compared to general right. calling categories right. in frogs right. yeah 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 right. so doc when yeah. when this when this calling happens we also know that yeah. uh, bush frogs in particularly they would want yeah. uh, their their call to resonate as much we we know for yeah. a fact that certain uh, uh, frogs use Uh, dry leaves so that they can or curled leaves so that they can sit Correct. inside Correct. and uh, ensure yes. that their their calls reverberate or um, or yes. resonate right uh, but Correct. we also Correct. know Correct. that in one plant uh, there could be two bush frogs competing right yes. is it it's possible yes. two yes. male bush frogs competing and that's why uh, male fights happen right so how, yeah. how yeah. when this fight happens between two male frogs how how do they decide who's the winner because they can't bite each other they, they don't True. so uh, though i True. know i i would want you to talk more about it uh, so sure sure as we were sure sure yeah. sure so uh, generally when male male combat happens uh, what they miss out is that they will be uh, in the sense they will hold each other's throat so right. that's the only way to say okay i want yes. to suppress you because there is no other yes. way if you kick also frog will go some other place and start throat right so the, the best way is to uh, close your mouth or close the uh, right. close the throat so that it won't croak by right. doing so the one right. who wants to hold he will also will not croak because exactly. it is so <laughs> exactly. in, in the <laughs> this entire process is so uh, what what i can say it's so engaging right. uh, when in the fight what happens is both will become silent so right they perhaps will not get the female at all their yeah, intention right. is one of them should get a female but Absolutely. doing a fight both of them right. may not get at all So it, and uh, the quite interesting part in frog is that when they croak right. they are spending energy uh, in the right. sense frogs are not like us they right. don't have their own body temperature their body temperature right. comes from sun and the food that they eat right and right. Uh, that's why they are called cold blooded though right. not literal sense but they right. they change their temperature according to the environment right now right. with each croak they are spending energy energy so each croak they are spending energy more and more energy Okay. the one who is very strong is right. capable of spending lot of energy throughout the night so that's why you probably have seen some toads will be croaking like throughout the throughout night throughout the night because yeah. they ha huh, so they have one is that their mechanism of vocalization is also completely different from right. how we talk okay. our says when we speak air escapes from our mouth right whereas when frog croaks it closes right. the mouth it closes right. the nose so right. what happens air is get trapped right. so just the air pushed from the lungs Push. into the vocal right. sac it it yeah. deflate inflates yeah. and yeah. when the, it deflates the air gets back into the lungs so that's yeah. what happens and it's a closed system of vocalization right. so in in doing so here the stronger male will be capable of croaking for long duration yeah. hours and yeah. each croak he will be spending energy the one right. who is capable of spending more energy is mm-hmm. a stronger individual and that right. gets the mate preference right. Right. right 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 so in in this fight also what happens is when the male who uh, force the throat Hold of the, the other throat. male his right. throat will also be blocked okay. so these two male will never be able to croak in the sense <laughs> right, as right. long as they are fighting they right. will not be able to croak yeah right yeah. right yes. so doc, uh, is it is it a proven thing that frogs can be territorial then yes it is they are uh, a majority is, like one of the uh, uh, incidents i need to narrate here is that sure. uh, initially when i got into the field right. uh, i was looking at this uh, 
core yellow frog which is right. called rautchester's luteolus right uh, what i tried to uh, see was that they were sitting on a particular height of a shrub and they right. will be croaking so uh, initially i was repeating these calls in the sense i also croak like yeah. ting 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 i reproduce those sound right so there was a Uh, time gap and there was the individual replying to my calls right so it happened so much so that when i uh, lowered my head and i yeah. went down and crook right. he also came down and crook wow. when i raised my head and crook he yeah, also yeah. raised yeah. his head incredible so it happened for 15 20 minutes and finally that frog landed on my throat oh wow uh. thinking that this individual is also a male correct correct right and and th- that's what happens for for them the territory is based on where the another individual is situated yeah. and how yeah. far they are so they want right. to defend the territory and right. if anybody is within the territory they will come and either have a combat or they yeah. will if they are inferior they will move to another place so right. that happens and right. female will be noticing all these aspects she will be yeah. very very selective in this part so she right. will look into all the aspects which male one who had right. the capability who voice quality is good which right. place he occupied and then she decides okay this This yeah. guy is one with whom I go and meet. Yeah, correct, yeah. correct. Yeah, that's what so, happens. So, so it's it's very fascinating. If 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 it's true, then it's possible that when these guys came out of the sea and they they took over land. So I'm assuming that yeah. uh, uh, you know uh, they they eventually took the terrestrial land first. Then they said, "Boss, there is not enough food here. Let me also take the bushes." So some got under the bushes. Yeah. Yeah. Then when they got yeah. under the bushes, they realized, "Oh, I can actually go up the tree." They went up the tree. Some that is why yeah. we have canopy frogs who who live their entire lifetime in the canopy, Correct. while we have Correct. terrestrial frogs who will not go up. So Correct. Uh, Correct. is it is it safe to assume that? across almost all uh, not almost all but a majority of frogs can be territorial and it's not only bush frogs or a certain species all frogs can be territorial yes yes absolutely you, you can consider that like, if you generalize i think 90% of the uh, frogs will be uh, territorial, uh, territorial. Right. Uh, whether it is aquatic whether it is uh, arboreal whether these bush right. frogs bu- right. in fact bush frogs are the ones which have uh, recently evolved uh, okay. for us recently evolved is also right. 30 million years not less than that <laughs> wow, wow. <Is laughs> yeah that, wow, so yeah because uh, uh, whatever frog in india what we have uh, the right. oldest one are called the nasikaba trackers or the pig nose right. frogs right, right? Okay. Uh, which was discovered in 2003 and they go burrow themselves inside the right. ground and they stay right. for uh, 360 plus days uh, 350 yeah. plus days inside the ground only 15 yeah. days they come out from right. that species which is about 80 to uh, 90 million years old Right. So the ones which are recent, which are these bush frogs, which are capable of going onto trees, is right. about thirty million years. So that's the wow. time frame we are talking about. Correct. Okay. So within this, each right. each one of them, whoever occupied different habitats, they right. all have their own territorial behaviors. So okay. some will croak and defend their territory. Some will fight and defend their territory. Right. And some will dance and defend their territory. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so let us let us talk about these dancing frogs. Uh, um, because they are very 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 fascinating so uh, guys yes, we have yes. uh, we have couple of species in our country which is restricted which is endemic only to the western ghats in the entire world Correct. and these guys are known to have a peculiar stance which is one of their yeah. behaviors which which means they raise their hind leg one of the hind legs yeah. it's called foot flag yes. so they, they spread Correct. their palm and they spread it so it's it's yeah. a way of communication let us ask doc more about how why yes, do they yes. do that how fascinating do you think they are because i find it extremely fascinating <laughs> absolutely absolutely uh, sachin uh, uh, again so one of the way of communication was vocalization you right. frogs croak and right. communicate the right. other way is visual communication where yeah. uh, as sachin was telling they extend their hind limb and show yeah. off to the mates right yeah. uh, this is how we used to think looking at a frog from borneo which is right. called stoaris latopalmatus uh, if you guys can search on youtube yeah. you will get this this is a bornean uh, uh, rock frog called right. stoaris right so they also do the foot flying so yeah. uh, initially when i uh, why got introduced to this frog i was really fascinated i was introduced right. to this frog in 2004 Okay. And I was just fascinated. I, I was looking at what is happening over here. Right. These frogs are just stretching their legs. Yeah. And uh, initially, I thought that uh, it is probably like, uh, I, if I can compare with uh, Hindi film heroes, mm-hmm. it is just they they taking Let's apart, like right. ripping apart the shirt and yeah. showing off the yeah. biceps and say, oh, yeah. I have this. Right. Uh, and this thought was there for quite long. I, I think right. I had this idea for six years to still think that it is to attract the female. 
Okay. But uh, when I collaborate with the uh, uh, foreign national, like uh, one of the uh, professor from University of Vienna, mm -hmm. he told me that it may not be. Okay. And that is where I started looking at the behavior uh, from a more territorial perspective. So right. we did an experiment and we tried to figure out what happens is that when the frog, uh, uh, these, these, uh, these frogs are called dancing frogs now. Uh, right. It's a cal common name for them. Correct. They are in the evergreen forest on a stream and right. uh, they will sit on a rock. Okay. Rock. And on the rock, each of these frogs will sit and they croak. Cro and right. once, uh, and, and these frogs are also uh, quite unique because many of the frogs are uh, active in the night, but these right. frogs, the dancing frogs are active during the daytime. Right. So in the daytime when they croak, there are other individuals who will also croak. Right. Right. So now the, there is a competition and these guys have evolved so much, they don't go and choke each other's throat. Okay. What they do is, so when they croak and if they see another individual close by and he's also croaking, they first extend their hind limb hind and limb. they show okay. off. Correct. So why do they show off this? Mm. They show to say that I have already occupied a particular uh, rock. You need not have right. to come near. Okay. Now the other frog, if he's an intruder, like how right. uh, human beings are. So right. if this frog also intrudes that space and then right. he uh, uh, croaks, this frog right. will sit uh, adjacent to each other, sit parallel like this, mm -hmm. and then he will kick. So oh. uh, instead of just showing off the leg, now he will use the same leg to kick. Right, to kick so, the other frog. Yeah, kick the other frog. So this right. becomes a visual communication in saying that, the foot flagging becomes visual right. communication in saying right. that, that is the perch height, that's the territory of the individual. Right. And if right. you venture into the territory or if you ingress yeah. into the territory, yeah. he's going to defend it. And they, right. are, they defend it very, very strongly by kicking. Right. So right. they will act, literally kick the other individual. And if right. the other individual is strong, he will occupy this side. So right. this happens. So yeah. this is a visual communication in Dancing Frogs. And, yeah. it, and certainly not how it is being showed in films like this foot flagging behavior is to attract the mate. No, that right. is for other species from different uh, uh, yeah. countries. But in India, yeah. In the right. Western Ghats, the ones right. who dance, they right. dance to maintain their territory. Yeah, ah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, Doc, how how safe is it to? Uh, because we we know that behavior is an aspect across all, uh, um, uh, across every species in different animals. Uh, that yeah. it's something where it is largely based on assumption, right? It is we will not be able to put a finger on it, and that this is precisely why it does it. Uh, uh, correct, so, correct. so how safe is it to uh, assume that these huh. guys do not do it for mating purposes at all? Correct, correct. So uh, this is where science pitches in. Right. So, uh, so that is why I was also telling. So my initial understanding was based on my personal uh, connect kind right. of. Right. So correct. I was also influenced by Hindi movies. Right. So probably all heroes yeah. were in my head. <laughs> right. So I was right. connecting in that sense. But yeah. only when we did the experiment. So what, right. how we do experiment is also, right. we will try to take out each of these behavior. For example, okay. we only keep a frog, right. uh, a robotic frog, and right. just produce only the sound. And we'll yeah. see whether the male responds to it. Right. And many right. of these experiments doesn't happen in the lab. It will happen in the field. In the field. So okay. we, awesome. we are now, we are now changing our uh, way of right. doing field work. We'll right. never take the frog out of the uh, yeah forest and keep it in the lab and do experiments. Yeah, we'll do yeah. experiment in the field itself. The field, so yeah. when you make the frog croak and see the response, right. frog only croaks, nothing happens. Yeah, right. Now yeah, what right. we'll do, we switch off the sound, we'll right. just make the frog to stretch its leg. Yeah, and then right. we'll see what is the response. Right. So when right. you do these kind of experiments right. of you're, blocking you're certain more. characters and then right. showing, you will come right. to know that it's awesome. when the frog croaks and yeah. extends its leg, the other right. frog starts responding to it. And that is right. where we say it is territorial. Right. Otherwise, you could have simply said, exactly. if the female gets attracted to it, we yeah, could have right. said yeah, right. it is the, for the attraction. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, Doc, uh, another question that came up to my mind uh, is, is uh, we, we know for a fact that the, the desire for a male when it comes out in the monsoon is to eat and mate, largely mate. Correct. It wants to produce as Correct. many offsprings. And vocalization Correct. is one. Uh, the second Correct. would be coloration that they need Correct. to, they want to use coloration like, like in the recent uh, stories about the news about those uh, uh, bullfrogs, bullfrog. yellow bullfrogs seen across and there yes. is some part yes. of media claiming that it is yes. COVID-19 yes. yes. and what not. Uh, so <laughs> Correct. tell us Correct. more about uh, the colorations and how does it affect yes. and why is it yes. important yes. than frogs. Correct, correct. So uh, as I like started taking this, uh, right. so you st you start recognize frogs frogs through the vocalization, right. 
right and then some of the uh, other species like dancing you will also recognize their dancing behavior okay. there's another perspective which is called visual communication where they use colors uh, right. in the sense for example if uh, if all the frogs are brownish in color how right. do you distinguish exactly. not us though yeah, yeah, but okay. the frog themselves yeah. the male yeah. and the female how do they yeah. distinguish themselves if this is a right. male and this is a female if right. they don't distinguish the frog has to mount on many individual to figure out who is male and who is female right. and by doing so they will they are losing out lot of energy right. and right. as i uh, earlier said frogs themselves don't have energy they have to get the right. source of energy by eating and they have right. to maintain that right? right so instead of spending energy in locating the uh, female what frogs right. do is they will try to wear a kind of color code in the okay. sense if they all all males will become yellow and right. females are brown you right. can easily say when yeah. and in a group you can figure out okay that yeah. brown is a lady so right. i need to go to her rather than going yeah. to a yellow color okay. uh, a, a crude and very bad analogy i can give is if you have observed uh, uh, the uh, academy award functions right all the males will come in tuxedo if you have seen that <laughs> right 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 so right. the idea is when right. you have a uniform kind of stuff you can distinguish who looks great and right. you need not have to go with them like okay. your yeah. focus will now only go towards the one who are not in tuxedo right, right. so right. you can see the female like actress yeah. kind of stuff yeah right. it's a, it's a very crude analogy but just yeah, to no, no, uh, keep yeah, your yeah. mind in there <laughs> sure sure so coming back to in the frog world what happens is these uh, bull frogs are the right. common toads also in the right. monsoon it the uh, onset of monsoon it's even before right. the onset of monsoon right. they will all change their color to yellow and right. based on their testosterone levels it's a right. male hormone right. the more the hormone the more bright uh, individual oh. will be so he will he will right. look typically like radiant yellow right. uh, it's also in the bullfrog so okay. what happens so if 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 you see in a lake kind of stuff and the uh, video that went viral uh, right. you are seeing that there are about 50 or 60 of these yellow bullfrogs right. which are all right. males and croaky yeah. yeah. and females will be brownish in color so right. it becomes easy for the yellow ones to go and right. mate with the brown ones right. Right. here the other thing is also that uh, there is a trick here that the male mm-hmm. does because mm-hmm. of the uh, ratio uh, sex ratio variation in frogs so right. for human beings we say uh, one male versus one female like we right. take a count of 1000 and say how many males right. and how many females right. in the frog world the sex ratio is very skewed there okay. could be as much as 10 to 50, uh, 10 to 20 25 males for one female wow right okay so right. that skew is what makes them to use new strategies right for example what happens is now uh, the same bullfrog when they are all right. yellow right. and they all croak simultaneously which is called chorusing right. now female gets confused she will right. not be able to figure out who is Who's the strong like with yeah. a have yeah. a character right? right so that's the in- intentional way of pulling themselves together and confusing the female right, right. and right. that is one of the way these frogs have uniform color coding and yeah. they want to croak simultaneously so that right. at least one of them who uh, like in in the group one yeah. will definitely going to get a female Good. and you might yeah. have seen that there will be a lot of scrambling that happens after right. that. like right. one female right. with one male but there are multiple toes yeah. around yeah. that yeah. but it's it's only one male who will mate finally with the female right. yeah right. that's that's right. that's the strategy they have it's called visual yeah. communication yeah. where they will have aloneness right. and it, it has nothing to do with covid Uh, uh but though there are issues of a frog having infections and i think we will come to that later but sure, as of sure. now if you focus uh right. covid has nothing to do with frogs behavior yeah. or their color changes and all uh, yeah. but good that I, i am also happy that people are able to watch these things It, like <laughs> know, exactly. 15 years ago uh, yeah, it right. should have been told for somebody to go and watch a frog now Absolutely. people will go and shoot with their yeah, right. uh, yeah. smartphones and post it and say i am happy in in one way that people are able to do this Right. right i'm seeing positive side of uh, these I, studios I, I, I. awesome yeah cool yeah. so um let's let's also talk about um um I, i'm asking questions that comes into my mind okay? perfect I perfect no issue no issue and that i think uh, people who follow us might be interested in so tell us about uh, there are various kinds of um uh, once the egg is laid there are some species where yeah. the males protect the eggs Uh, correct, uh, like correct. some nicky species like arctic frogs yeah. so night frogs sorry now they're called night frogs some night frog species the yeah. the, the male will have uh, the clutter of eggs and it will take care of them uh, there are correct. some uh, uh, frogs uh, uh, like toads who will have one thread and there will be lot of eggs correct correct thread. there will be uh, bush frogs who will 
plonk it on a leaf and uh, a direct yes. froglet comes out there is no tadpole yes so if you can just yes, tell yes, us yes, a yes. little bit about uh, these and what oh. how, how oh, is it oh perfect doing? perfect yeah 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 there are there are about uh, 40 different ways how frogs breed wow uh, wow. yeah and uh, uh, most predominant thing once we, uh, i will not discuss but it right. is a general way so right. uh, the idea is male croaks uh, right. they will mount females right. are generally large and that's right. why they are below and right. males on top right. and they will go to a place a yeah. moist place and right. they start laying eggs right and a uh, frog eggs also changes from something like 8 uh, to right. something like 200 300 or 1200 300 kind of right. like thousands right. of eggs wow. so that's the number of variations in number of yeah. eggs yeah. but this is what happens when the female right. lays eggs male which right. sheds sperm and uh, right. fertilization happen outside right now in certain cases uh, when when the egg number is large right. uh, there is no need for uh, parental care kind of because right. it's so large that right. at, the idea is that at least few of them will survive, will survive. and that yeah. is why they produce large eggs okay. now that is one extreme when right. they have less number of eggs let us say only right. eight eggs now right. there needs to be a certain kind of care because you have laid only eight eggs and you want right. all the eggs to survive right. and that is where the uh, the night frogs comes into the picture where yeah. have, there where they show remarkable parental cares and right. one of the parental care i described is from a frog called kumbara night frog okay uh, what it does i think uh, you you guys also can watch it on youtube uh, there is sure. a small video clip that is being given sure. uh, what happens is that when the uh, male and female mount they mm. do something called head stand so the right. male and female put their head inside the water and okay. female puts all the eggs on a twig small right. twig which is about 8 cm above the water okay. and females leave the place now right. the male who has fertilized this particular egg will okay. go to that place he takes right. the mud from the water and he plasters right. that onto the wow. eggs uh. so the and and it it is not that it just takes some small mud like the way i am showing it looks okay. as though i have mud in my hand and i am putting it there okay. and i will escape but right. in frog it takes about 40 minutes to do it my and, and 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 that's the time when they are really vulnerable for any attack right because right. they are they are on their only two Out legs and right. other two hands are on the right. eggs right. and and this male will be doing this for multiple reasons right one obvious reason anybody can say is that it is trying to uh, uh, protect the eggs in right. taking care like putting a mud on right. it Yeah. but there are several questions why uh, an aquatic frog wants to put mud on eggs exactly uh, right. other other re- reason could be there are predators which are uh, looking at these eggs and right. he wants to protect it and that's why right. he is plastering those eggs right right, right. third right. question is could these eggs be uh, desiccated in the sense they will dry right. off that's why he will put in mud on that so that it will right. keep the moisture right. uh, and this particular aspect we still still need to do lot of research because we don't know what actually makes them to put uh, mud onto it but right. one of the obvious right. reason we figured out is that there is a crab species in these water they are capable oh. of figuring out the eggs and frog right. eggs is also uh, uh, which is called uh, pigmented eggs in the sense okay. they they are visible because there is a vegetal pole and animal pole in the sense right. you see yolk which is whitish in color right. you see the growth of the growth portion of the egg which is brownish in color okay. so if the egg is kept on a twig you can okay. clearly see that it is a uh, right. obvious looking kind of thing so okay. crabs will go and eat it uh, so if you plaster mud onto it you can't see, see so wow. one of one ki- kind of parental care is just right. putting a plaster on these eggs wow. so this is again a lot of things has to be done right. uh, like of research course. on this why they have yeah. evolved this kind of behavior because right. male is as i said uh, it is really vulnerable at that point in time right. can be eaten sure. by anything and he is sure. easily uh, catchable when he is plastering eggs right. so why right. he has to do Correct. uh like parallel to this question would be is he uh, uh what we call as honest signaling uh, right. is he just showing off that he is capable exactly. of plastering so many right. eggs so right. the other female who is looking at him will say oh this guy has plastered already two clutch right. of eggs so can i go and mate with him it, yeah. it could be that also Absolutely. but we need to test all these things right right, uh, right now it is all speculative Good. there are certain eggs as you pointed out sachin is that they lay in uh, eggs inside the uh, bamboo uh, twigs Right. and uh, uh, there will be male who has uh, mated with or fertilized these eggs will be Correct. taking care of it right one thing is that even uh, it is in sicilians also sicilians right. are also amphibian right. is that when they give parental care mm-hmm. fungus will not attack oh, the eggs okay. wow. otherwise since these eggs are moist any right. fungus can grow on this and it can destroy the entire clutch of eggs right so right. male attending these eggs also ensure that no fungal infection happens to these eggs 
Right. And uh, uh, in one of the uh, paper uh, that I uh, authored with uh, Sheshadri and uh, David Bickford mm-hmm. is that these bamboo breeding frogs, right. what happens is the parental care is given. And right. if the male moves out, the other male comes in and eats away all those eggs. Wow. That's there is oh, male cannibalism also happens. Right. So male, so the parental protection is not just from the predators. It's also right. predator so of your own kind. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It's yeah. cannibalistic. Right. So right. that is one of the reasons. And uh, in certain certain frogs like uh, the bush frogs, mm-hmm. uh, what happens is they won't lay eggs inside the water. They lay right. eggs on like you rightly pointed out on a leaf or under right. the uh, right. ground. Uh, right. So these eggs uh, take about eighteen days to hatch out as a tiny little froglets. Right. So uh, if you if you go back and uh, understand, frogs are generally lay eggs and eggs hatch out as tadpoles and right. tadpole metamorphose and becomes a frog. frog. Right. But in this bush frog. Mm-hmm. they again since they evolved recently yeah. they have adapted to a newer way of uh, developing so they what right. they will do is all the development even tadpole happens within the small right. egg right. and a froglet comes out right. so it is right. not that they skip the tadpole exactly. really living tadpole right. they might have skipped but right. tadpole happens within the egg right. so these are the different ways in which they right. breed right. and as i i said earlier it also depends on the species Okay. We, in india we have about 452 species as of today okay. Okay. Uh, among among which we have two salamanders some 40 sicilians and all okay. remaining 200 300 something sorry okay. 400 okay. something okay. are all frogs okay. and toads okay. right okay. so what we know is probably 20 of them okay. remaining 350 or 375 yeah. species oh, we don't know anything okay. we don't know anything Right, right. so that that's a fascinating world like even e- each one will spend one year right 320 people can work on frogs exactly yeah. or 370 okay. people can work on frogs I know, I know. for Amazing. one year right right yeah. incredible so doc yes, what are the yes, yes. major threats for frogs oh great question uh, so this uh, uh, this entire frog threats and all came into limelight in the first uh, herpetological congress which happened in 1989 Right. So till that time, people thought frogs are there. We are there. Exactly. We are all safe. Right. But uh, 1989, it was first time when they pointed out that frogs populations are just simply vanishing. Right. Even though you don't see any pollution, you don't see right. any factories over there. There is no industrial pollution. Right. Frog populations are just simply wiped out. So right. what is happening? Okay. So they started then uh, asking questions like, oh, whether there is a chemical compound in the water that has changed. Yes, they figured out that uh, the use of pesticides, fertilizers have changed and UVB radiations have changed. Uh, That has influenced. Probably there is climatic issues. Uh, There are also issues of habitat fragmentation, which is the major threat in the sense uh, there used to be a water body and now there is a high-rise building coming over there where the frogs will go, they vanish because they can't move long distances. Uh, If, for example, even though it is not uh, 100% correct, uh, see, uh, an animal like a tiger or an elephant Right. So if something happens, they have a capability to move long distances and right. they can go Correct. kilometers together. Correct. Correct. Whereas frog, if a habitat goes off, they can't right. even move few meters. Right. They are stuck there. Right. So if the habitat is not there, they are going to die. Right. So habitat fragmentation was one of the key things which has uh, led to the dwindling of frogs. Right. But right. even even in certain forested areas, when there is no problem at all, when the frogs right. started dying, Correct. People started really looking at what could be the reason. And right. they figured out there are two biological uh, uh, issues. One right. is called the Rana virus. Right. And the other one is called the fungus, uh, which is called right. Batrachotrichium dendrobatidis. Right. Uh, don't worry, we call it as BD fungus. Okay. Right. So these two fungus, they figured out, and they were operating on frog populations. Mm. And when, when these fungus or virus attacks them, Right. The entire frog population is going to go down irrespective of which place they are in. Right. 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 So this was dis- discussed in 1989. And right. subsequently, they also figured out that may not be one factor you can tell. It can right. be a synergistic effect of all. Right. Synergistic effect is like it's not additive. Like you can't right. say habitat fragmentation plus uh, right. air pollution plus something right. will lead to right. dwindling. It right. can be a multiplying factor. It can be right. an exponential factor right. saying that habitat fragmentation and fungus Okay. can wipe out something like 2,000 of frogs in a particular right. area. Right. Right. It can be a forested area, right? right. So it's right. a synergistic effect uh, people right. have started looking at. Right. India right. also, uh, of late, uh, we figured out that in Western Ghats, we have fungal infections in frogs. Right. But right. these fungus were there from long back. It's okay. a forest fungus. It's a right. plant fungus. Right. BD fungus, what I'm calling. Okay. They existed. They coexisted right. with frogs. 
Correct. So what is happening with the frog uh, when they are developing is that Correct. there is a resistance mechanism within the frog. Correct. That Correct. switch is not turned on. If the ah. switch is turned off, right. these tadpoles or the frog population yeah. becomes vulnerable for right. fungal attack. Right. So Correct. once the fungal attacks, it is not just one frog. It is sure. a population of frog. That entire Correct. population of frog in an area will Correct. just die off. because right. they don't have internal resistance yeah same yeah. thing now if you equate with covid this Correct. is what is happening it is Correct. not that covid came Correct. right now you had these totally. viruses and all but right. if you don't have internal mechanism to right. fight against it right population is going to go right right so right. you have a great example from frog world Correct. to Correct. figure out what Correct. is happening to us also Yeah. Correct. So, yeah. Doc, quickly because we are already we've got only 10 minutes left with us I want you to quickly oh, tell us goodness. about what can people do uh how can people contribute because you run a very beautiful um, the science project citizen science project uh, called yeah. frog watch i would want you to talk about it quickly so that i can then ask questions if people have any questions yeah please sure 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 yeah so uh, uh, so uh, any anybody for that matter whoever is in conservation field without right. people support you can't conserve anything okay. uh, it's a hoax if you say that i only do science and that's why i conserve uh, it is not going to work Uh, because you need collaborative and uh, input from the people who are in the field it's right. not that i sit in bangalore and say oh you go and conserve in western ghat it's not right. going to work right. so right. how do you do that 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 is where you involve people you ask them pertinent question and ask them to be collaborator rather than data collectors okay. so in one of our project which is called frog walk and frog watch also which is on right. india biodiversity portal we what we are saying is anybody who has a smartphone just right. go around your own home you need not have to go yeah. to western ghats to figure out a frog there yeah. are frogs in your own uh, bathrooms which are called right. tree frogs just click yeah, a picture right. of it and right. post it okay. so that we will know where you are seeing a particular frog so it's, right. it's also an information for scientists like me to figure okay. out where this frog is distributed then right. i will be able to bring a conservation plan saying that oh this frog has been reported to yeah. I think if internet went off, Doc, let us just wait for thirty seconds. I hope you connect back, or someone called you. One of the two. Let us let's just wait, guys, for two minutes and see. Yes, yeah, I am there. I am there. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No so, yeah. Uh, uh, what happens is that. Uh, Uh, sorry, I was yeah. uh, missing the link. Frog so, what happens when when people report it? I will right. be able to say when there are two thousand individuals, this conservation necessity is right. not right now. Okay. But look at. uh from last two years there's only one report of this particular species can we look at right. and press right. for conservation action plan okay. so this is how when people are involved conservation action plans emerges out and right. we are doing this on frog watch in india biodiversity portal which is under creative commons licensing it is not sure. that you provide sure. data and we run away with data no yeah. that's okay. not the way what right. we are looking at is it is your own data but okay. when we analyze the data and we try to publish it we acknowledge your support and then say look guys uh, there is one particular species i am right now working which is called uh, malabar tree toad right. again you can search on that uh, what we are asking is it's a western ghat endemic and it is being yeah. said that it's an endangered species it's also because right. only few reporting has happened now in last right. Uh, right. two years if you see we were we also got a grant this year we started seeing that it is common actually in the western ghats it's only that right. scientists right. couldn't able to figure this out so also right. uh, guys right. anybody who so is looking at scientists at somebody who, yeah right. so some big guy kind of we right. we also have limitations we are also right. just human beings we are not something great right. so we have missed out right. this particular species and made right. it endangered now if you plot this uh, distribution right. from across western ghat it becomes non endangered species That's a good thing in conservation. You do not have right. to have all endangered species to conserve. Absolutely. You can delist exactly. a species and say exactly. this is being delisted, and now see exactly. what is its population. So that yes. is where people can contribute in right. uh, citizen science initiatives. Correct. Yeah, I think Correct. I could able awesome. to finish awesome. in five minutes. So guys, you can just you, yeah, yeah. You could you, uh, guys, uh, whoever wants to do this, it will be a great, great help. So you just Google for frog watch. um or you can look up for uh, uh, to dr gururaja you can always message him and ask him also he'll be more than happy to respond to which one of you all but it's about you posting a picture of any frog yeah, that you see yeah. irrespective of you know yeah. the frog or not any picture you see with a smartphone you don't have to hold the frog please just take a picture correct correct upload correct, it correct. and someone will get in touch with you and tell you hey this is what the frog is so that you are also happy what frog it is and the scientists benefit and overall the frogs benefit it's as simple yeah, as that yeah, right yeah, so yeah, so, yeah, so do yeah. uh, do contribute on this please if possible uh, uh, doc you are okay accepting pictures these guys can put up a picture that they saw 2 years ago 3 years ago 
Ah, right. perfect. No issues at all. Absolutely. Time yeah. is any, not at all an issue. Data is yeah. good data. Yeah. Right? Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. So I'll yeah. quickly open up commenting, guys. If you have questions, please, please, please uh, throw in the questions. We have eight, nine minutes. So if um, uh, if anyone yeah. has a specific question, we'll take it up. Uh, if not, uh, thank you so much, Doc. That was a lot of information coming our way. So it was fascinating My pleasure. to know Such so a... much about. Uh, yeah, it was so so cool. Um, so uh, we could have gone in for watch, something uh, like two hour session. <laughs> I know we could actually. Yeah. So there's so much to talk about. Call, Doc? Yeah. What is it called? Frog watch. I was not able to hear you. Sorry. Sorry, uh, what, what can you come? What is the frog watch website frog, called? Yeah, come again, Sachin. Yeah, it is called. What is the uh, name of the website? It it is called India Biodiversity Portal dot org slash frog watch. Okay. You want okay. me to key in? India. Yeah, please, please, please. India guys, Doctor Guru Raja would be punching in the. Uh, India URL. Bio Diversity. Uh, dot org. Yeah. Uh, followed by. Okay. That's that's where you can post. Perfect. perfect. It also has something called Frog Watch. The right. logo that you guys can see is my yeah. uh, Frog Watch logo. Guys, yeah. guys, you can just Google up, guys. Just look for India Biodiversity yes, yes. dot org. That's it. Please Google. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. And uh, uh, Magesh is asking, can frogs be harmful to humans in any way? Uh. Yes, they can be uh, because they have uh, cert certain uh, frogs. Though in India we don't have uh, these right. are South uh, South American, American frogs, frogs, which are right. called uh, poison dart poison frogs. Dart frogs yeah. They have uh, they have chemical compound that is on their skin, Correct. which is uh, based on what they eat. Like right. What the, if the frog has eaten certain leeches, certain right. ants? The poison from that would have come to the frog. Right. And if you if you touch it. Or if you have skin abrasion, or there is a cut in your skin, and if you are going to touch that particular frog, you can right. be dead. Correct. Correct. Because it's such a potent frog. But in India, as of now, we don't have. Right. Uh, but having said that, you you still need not have to touch frogs because your body right. temperature is more than that of exactly. a frog, and you exactly. may be killed. Right. Uh, you are and going to kill the frog. Yeah. And particularly now, guys, because most of you all use hand sanitizers, please yes. do not yes. touch frogs. Yes. After That's using a great... hand sanitizer, please, please do not. Correct. Do Correct. Correct. Kill the frog. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Shashank asked a uh, question. Uh, Shashank Dalvi is asking, "Brilliant session. Are there any species of frogs in India where females vocalize as well?" Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the Nyctibatricus itself, uh, one, right. uh, like the, uh, the frog, frog from the uh, Mahabaleshwar area, it's called right. the Humayun's night frog. Right. Females right. do vocalize. Okay. Uh, so uh, it has been reported very recently that right. females accept uh, by uh, vocalizing. Awesome. Yeah, Correct. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, Vikram Satyanathan yeah. is a good friend of mine. He is asking, "Hello, Doctor Guru Raja. I would like to know the most biodiverse spot for frogs in the Western Ghats." <laughs> oh, wonderful time, question. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, like, if you ask uh, people like from Karnataka, I will say Kurg, uh, uh, Jog area kind of Correct. thing. But Correct. again, uh, don't worry about biodiversity. What we require to do is even non-biodiverse areas. You should be able to go and report. Right. So exactly. it will be better even if you talk about the Deccan plateaus because Correct. many of us we don't even know what kind of species right. exist there. Right. We are like last hundred years probably we are focusing only on Western Ghats or Northeast India. Correct. So let us Correct. also look into other places where we have some Correct. some different species. Correct. Correct. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Ajay Tharavat is asking my twelve-year-old uh, daughter Ashra wants to know wow. the name of the frog which you described, which stays under the burrow for three fifty days. Oh, okay. And I didn't describe that frog. It is right. by done by Biju and uh, Bosyut. It right. was done in two thousand three. It is called pig-nosed frog or right. purple frog. Purple frog. So till till last two years, we thought it's only one species. Now there is two species. Right. Uh, one is Nasica batracus uh, sahyadrensis. Sahyadr. Other one is Nasica batracus bupati. Correct. There are two species now. Yeah. Right. Right. So, and the yeah. uh, are there any places where both these species are found together? Uh, the, we don't know. Again, these are the right. critical questions when one Correct. needs to know. Correct. As of now, we think which is on one is on the western side of the Western Ghats, other one is on the eastern side of the Western Ghats. Right. So, but yeah, there can be possibilities. That in the near future we are going to find somewhere where right. both may be present. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Border. So Jeevan Mahadeva is asking: Does any big frog eat other small frogs of different types? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Bullfrog is a great example. Correct. So if if you have one bullfrog and if you are yeah. kept like if there are other frogs, they correct. will be like consumed one by other. 
Right. Even night frog also does it. It's these are called cannibalistic behaviors. Okay. They can eat their own species or right. they can eat other species also. There are right. these kind of species in India. Okay. Okay. Bull frog is a great example. Right. And bull frog right. tadpole is another great example because they feed on other tadpoles. So right. they are not only uh, cannibalistic when they are adults. They are cannibalistic from their beginning itself. When they are right. tadpole itself, they eat on other tadpoles. Correct. Their own uh, siblings. Right. Okay. Someone's ask. Uh, he's been asking for long now. Arna wants to know visible features between Rahul's sister's glandulosis and acroparalagi. <laughs> I told him please go with calls, but he yet wanted to ask it. He's punched the question here. <laughs> oh. So okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I I can only give you a, a detailed answer uh, in in your response to an email rather than giving out here because yeah. even I I myself feel confused when I'm seeing all these things. Exactly. But then yeah. again, call call is one of the better way Absolutely. to look at uh, Rahul's sister's. Uh, exactly. uh, uh glandulosis versus uh, yeah, right. uh, the other one right, right. Yeah. okay thank you so much I, I, this is the answer i told him yesterday on chat but he was adamant that i ask you this question so he punched it here. perfect so, no no Arnav, that's a great question yeah i know he's a young boy i think he's 18 years old or lesser he's is very very curious in frogs so it's it's good to see people getting into frogs uh, arvind yeah. is asking a, a beautiful question why do where do frogs disappear in the summers not all of them wonderful are. question yeah. yeah yeah so you so uh, this is oh, sorry. Like, Correct, correct. So uh, frogs don't go anywhere. They will right. be available there only. Only thing is, we will not be able to see it because they are not croaking. They are not so visible as during the monsoon. Right. So just for example, go and search these uh, uh, cricket frogs. What we call okay. the uh, minor warriors. Right. They will be there in the crevices somewhere deep down. Probably right. they are not visible uh, at the outset. But if you dig right. deep, you right. will be finding them there. Even right. the bush frogs just the same way along right. the streams in the below the boulders. They will be there. Right. So they won't right. go anywhere. Right. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. I'm um, unfortunately there are too many questions, but unfortunately we're running out of time, guys. We'll not be able to take up questions. But do drop in me, uh, drop me a message, or drop Guru Raja the message directly. If you drop Perfect. me, I will take it up and I'll probably put a, as a story on a Q and A later. Uh, or we can, we can, uh, if uh, if some of you all push it, we can get Dr. Guru Raja to come again after two months and <laughs> we can have a detailed <laughs> session again. But yeah, thank yeah, you so yeah. much, Doc. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, pleasure, pleasure talking to you. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. And My pleasure to too. All of you all. Yeah, thank you to the rest. Thank you, thank you guys. Thanks, thanks yeah. again. Thanks again thank for so spending much. time yeah. on a Saturday evening. Thank you very right, much. Right. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. So thank much, you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll, thank, I'll, you. thank you guys. Thanks, yeah. Sachin. Again, thank you. that's thank a wonderful you. session. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.